For over 50 years I avoided fishing in Alaska because I preferred the warm weather fisheries found in my home waters of Florida. The purpose of this video is to help you from making the same mistake I did in waiting too long to come to this fisherman Shangri-La. On your first trip to Alaska, don't get overwhelmed with all the choices. Just fly into Anchorage and head south to the Kenai Peninsula. Here you'll find bays, rivers, creeks, and lakes that hold a great variety of hungry fish. And along the way you're going to see some breathtaking scenery. About an hour south of Anchorage on Highway 1, you'll run into the turnoff to Hope, Alaska. In Hope on Resurrection Creek, you're going to find some great do-it-yourself fishing opportunities. For salmon, yes I said flossing. When salmon migrate up a stream to spawn, they're really not looking to eat anything. But if you take a hook and you put it in front of them, as they open up their mouth as they swim upstream, they may strike your hook out of aggravation or you just might get lucky enough to get your hook lodged in their jaw. According to Alaska fishing regulations, if you foul hook a fish, that means any place outside of the jaw, you must release it immediately. The tackle that you need for flossing is pretty basic. You can use either a spinning rod, bait casting, or a fly rod. And at the end of your line, you want to have a 30-pound class tippet. And to the end of that tippet, you tie a size 2 hook. And again, with Alaska regulations in many spots, you can't use anything larger than a size 2 hook, which has a gap of about a 3 eighths of an inch. Here are some popular flies for salmon, the top two being the most popular for most anglers. Another advantage to flossing is that even young anglers can be successful with this technique. The downside to the flossing technique is that you're usually going to be fishing in a crowd, or as they call it in Alaska, carnival or combat fishing. I prefer to find smaller streams and fish for arctic char and trout. In this type of environment, I like to use either a 6 or a 3 pound tippet, and I use a size 16 beadhead nymph. Most any type of beadhead pattern will work, but my favorite is a prince nymph. Here my son is catching a nice arctic char. The coloration on these fish is amazing. Unfortunately, the video just doesn't do it justice. That's respectable. Oh, beautiful color. Yeah. In addition to the rivers and streams, there's some great fishing in the thousands of lakes located along the road in the Kenai Peninsula. Two of the lakes that I fished on this trip were Grayling and Meridian Lake. Remember when you're hiking in Alaska that you're not at the top of the food chain. Talk to your friend, talk to yourself, but make noise as you're going along to alert moose and also grizzly bear to your presence. Another recommendation is to bring bear spray in all your hikes. By making noise and using common sense, I've never had to use a bear spray, but it's good to know that it's there for a last resort. When fishing the lakes, my favorite fly is a beadhead nymph. When I hike into a lake, I don't like bringing a lot of equipment like waders, so I use a pair of sandals on the bottom of my feet and I wet wade. I also look for structure to cast to at the lake, like here with this tree in the water. And it didn't take long for the grayling to show up. Grayling in Alaska grow very slow at about an inch a year, so these fish were somewhere around 10 to 12 years old. Trout are also very abundant in these lakes. At this lake I was fishing on a point that went into deep water and also on either side there were some trees that had fallen in the water. With all this structure around it was non-stop action for the hour that I fished here. I love the color on these trout and I let them all go to fight another day.
As you hike from one fishing location to the next, you're going to enjoy some great scenery along the way. After doing some map research, I was able to find a secluded location to avoid the carnival salmon fishing crowds. The tackle that I was using today was a seven weight fly rod, which to be honest was a little bit light. With big salmon and heavy current, an eight or a nine weight rod would be a much better choice. I was using a fly that I tie called a salmonator, which is basically a supersized shad dart with a lead eye on it. Pink was my favorite color. Take a look at how bent the hook is on this fly and it will give you a good idea of how much pressure a 15 pound salmon can put on your tackle in heavy current. When a big salmon decides to go downstream, about the only thing you can do is follow it. And just when I had beached the salmon, and I thought the battle was over, he was ready to show me he had a little bit more fight left in him. And it was off to the races one more time. This is a male chum salmon. You can tell it's a male because of its pointy snout and also the battle scars in front of its dorsal fin from spawning against other males. This is a female chum salmon and you can tell because of the rounded jaw and also the lack of battle scars around the dorsal fin. All salmon caught on this trip were released to continue on with their spawning journey. I have no issue with keeping fish to eat, but I already had plenty of fillets back in the freezer at home. While you're fishing, you'll see plenty of wildlife, like this family of otters, and these little characters will steal a fish right off your fishing line. Don't ask me how I know. You will also see lots of bald eagles soaring in the air and sitting in trees looking for their next meal. I enjoyed exploring creeks, even those that were close to fishing, just to watch the spawning activity of the salmon. Here we have a group of sockeye salmon getting ready to spawn. This group of male bachelor sockeye salmon are chasing each other around until some female will come on the scene. It's sort of like watching an episode of the Keystone Cops. As I wrap up this video, I just want to reiterate that the Kenai Peninsula is very visitor friendly. The roads in this area of Alaska are very good and setting up your own trip should be no problem at all. But if you do want a little help, there are many good backcountry guides and also there are some great fishing charters out of Homer, Whittier, and also Seward if you want to set up a fishing trip through a charter captain. As far as lodging goes, you'll have plenty of choices between hotels, bed and breakfasts, Airbnbs, and there's even a service out there that basically does the same thing as Airbnb for RVs called RVShare.com. I'd like to thank Tier of Taste who passed this along to me from a video that I did last year on Alaska. Whichever lodging option you choose, just make sure to make your reservations well in advance of your trip. If you like the outdoors, travel, and fishing, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next adventure. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.